Hey, Facebook world. Hi. Hi. Welcome to... Technology. Uh, welcome, Facebook world, uh, to quarantine coping number eleven. This is our eleventh edition, straight eleventh day in a row. And hi, Tana. Man, is she committed or what? Every she asks day. all great questions and everything. Uh, we are at, if you, as you can tell, we checked into Front Twenty Farms. There's a story behind that. So we are at our sister farm that Tim and Kim Young uh, own, and they are the most amazing people. And uh, they have allowed us to kind of partner with them on various fronts, but we get to use the greenhouse. So um, we are at Front 20 Farms. Check their Facebook out. Check everything out. And... Uh, they have zebras. They have, hey, over there. We're doing our social distancing. There's Tim. <laughs> we're doing our social distancing. So we give them a heads up and they, they scatter because, well, we're scared, yeah. I think. Um, hey, Greg. So we're going to talk to you today about, I never even given a title, did I? I don't know. Did you? I probably you didn't. you were going to. You I'd... said Greenhouse Vacation. Oh, yeah. Greenhouse Vacation. Tell them what you said on the way on the drive over here. I said, well, because there's travel bans in place and we're not allowed to go anywhere. And we actually had snow today. I mean, it's cold. So we came down to the greenhouse to have our little tropical vacation inside today. Tropical <laughs> vacation. It is it is a very cold 81 in here. So we'll be peeling uh, layers of yeah. uh, clothing. That sounded weird. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> I'm going to... Well, at least my coat, yeah. And it's so clean. Look at that. There's not any evidence of goat bites, nibbles, chickens, horses, whatever else we have. I don't know if you can hear that donkey. Hey, Libby. So, check out Front 20 Farms on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, they're wonderful people. Uh, they have a neat setup here. And we're going to get going, and I'll turn it over to someone that you'd much rather look at, that being Lisa. And she will explain everything. Can you guys hear us okay? Thumbs up, hearts, likes, something? Is that loud in here. I gotta, we'll assume that you guys can hear us. Okay. If you can't, let us know and we'll yell. So, yeah, this is what we started a bunch of seeds already. We started as far back as the beginning of February, actually. Um, and we have all kinds of stuff going. It's really exciting to watch it coming up. Every and time we come down here, we get to see the progress. It's like... And they all came from tiny seeds that were so tiny we could hardly even see them. And now we have... Which one do you want to talk about first? Well, it's already the onions. Because that's the first thing we planted. So we've already got these onions going. What kind of onions? All kinds of onions. Some of these are regular onions and some of them are um, um, shallots. So they're all different... Different varieties. Lisa, you need there. to talk a little louder. Okay. So we have some Brunswick here, some Stuttgartner. These are shallots. Down there we've got some um, Parma, yellow Parmas. So there's just kind of a variety of different things. Um, so that's onions. They are in little soil blocks, which you can see are just a little it's kind of like the pellets that you can buy at the store if you get those little jiffy pellets but we made these ourselves we have a special tool i'll show you that in a minute and it makes a little hole in the top and then you can plant your seed right in there and then when you're ready to transplant you just take that whole thing and drop it in the ground so it's really cool and really easy to do so that's onions up here we have spinach which you can see needs transplanted out of these containers it's already almost to the point where we could eat it as baby spinach if we wanted to. Over here we have asparagus, which are fun to look at. Um, we won't be able to harvest any of that for a couple of years. Asparagus takes a while to get going, but it is a perennial, so once it gets going, it will be prolific and spread, and we will have plenty of it. There are all kinds of other things here. We've got tomatoes. We've got... Thirteen varieties of tomatoes. Thirteen different varieties of tomatoes already. We've got like seventeen varieties of peppers that are started. 
these are peppers and these up here that got planted a little like a week later look how little so these little babies are just starting to pop up oh cute very cute and this is cabbage both of these two trays are cabbage <clears throat> which is coming along real nice and then over on this side more cabbage And then these two um, shelves are both all herbs. So we have marjoram, four kinds of basil. We got marjoram, basil, four different kinds. Thyme. Thyme. I got too much thyme, thyme. on my hands. <laughs> you can see that it's kind of sporadic germinating here. Some of these herbs can be a little tricky to germinate. So, How come you didn't even laugh at my sticks <laughs> repertoire? Thank you. Yeah. Chives, oregano. <clears throat> hey, Heather. Heather helped us uh, plant a lot of this. Yes. So. Yep. And then we'll also be doing parsley and cilantro, but they don't like to be transplanted. So we're going to direct seed those when the weather gets a little bit nicer outside. And not snowing. And not snowing. How about that? So, and then up here we've got three different kinds of broccoli. Which probably aren't even popping out yet. No. We just, oh, wait, wait. We just planted. Yeah, they are. Are they? Yeah. Here, bring it down. I can, I, I saw it, but wow, look at that. Oh, yay. They're little babies. Oh, my gosh. That's so, so now, nice. now look at this. Oh, I, I, yeah, less than a week. What's the coolest thing ever is, obviously not everything here, but a good majority of this right here on two shelves is going to fill up a good portion of our 5,000 square foot garden. And it's all from organic seeds. Um, it's it's just so cool. I, I know I'm a child typically at heart, but to see, a, to see what a little tiny seed does and it, how much food it creates, it's just awesome. And especially when you are the one harvesting it and eating it and sharing it with others, um, it's pretty cool. So anyway, very healthy. Oh, you're going to actually do a whole demonstration? If it doesn't stick, it's because we haven't watered it and all that. But we just want to give you an idea. Um, you know, you, uh, Walmart and um, Shopco. Is Shopco a store? I don't know. Um, anyway, when you go buy those little plastic um, pellets, trays, and it, it has everything in it. Um, we did that <clears throat> for the first year, but they're not, they're not that great. So we ordered... This tool here, and we fill this up with soil. Well, not soil, our compost. It's a mixture. It's a mixture of a whole bunch of healthy soil stuff. And some organic, fertilizer. organic fertilizer, soil, and a whole bunch of good stuff. But anyway, this will make those little blocks that Lisa showed you. And the, the cool thing is, here, she's got a kink. I got a kink in my neck. You got one in the hose. How's that? I've come to save the day. So anyway, that machine will make little blocks like this. And it actually puts a little hole in it for you. How cool is that? The machine itself was rather spendy for really just that. But, man, we've used it and, you know... It's made in America, so how, hallelujah on that. Um, so while she's mixing that, and there's not dead space, what is going on in the world? It's so insane. We had an earthquake in Idaho, second biggest earthquake in the entire world for the last month um, happened here in Idaho. Um, and then yesterday we was were working and hot and then today it was snowing it's just like the joke is if you're in Idaho if you don't like the weather just wait five minutes but I mean it's actually been like that so see how she's squeezing that soil she wants to make sure that a little bit of water needs a little tiny bit more
while she's mixing that, <coughs> this is aquaponics. Going to have shrimp, tilapia, sh shrimp, tilapia, um, lettuce. Oh, check this out. 1,200 heads of lettuce are going to be in here. 1,200 heads of lettuce. So you put these little uh, seeds, lettuce, in here. And this whole thing's full of water. And there's the root. And they just float. They just float and grow. Now imagine this whole entire thing being full. Isn't that cool? So plenty of veggies, plenty of lettuce, shrimp, tilapia. And all of the water circulated, right? So the fish fertilize it. Recycled. The fish fertilize it, comes through here, goes through a filter, comes in here, both of them, feeds everything that's planted here. Oops, sorry. Here, hold on. So she's just, she's just pounding that in there. There might be one that doesn't get full. We usually take enough time, but I want to make sure that they kind of get an idea. That looks good. Let me see what you're doing here. It's kind of a nice little, you have to push and pull at the same time. Look at that. Look what this machine makes. Twenty. We can plant twenty in there, so we'll get Yeah, it's twenty. So we'll have twenty, forty, sixty. Yep. So these two little deals will have 120 seeds. seeds. How cool is that? Tonight we're planting peas. Normally I direct seed my peas, but we are late on getting our mulch late in our garden due to some technical difficulties. <laughs> so um, I'm going to go ahead and start these seeds. Technical difficulties? What was that? Well, that's Well, okay, yeah. So if you don't know, see what's on our hat right here? And then... Let's see what's on my hat. Okay, tell am I pointing at it? Right. Yep. So the dilly womp, and that's the technical term, that you hook up uh, implement to your tractor. That actually came off and broke. And it flipped toward, it flew about 12 feet to the barn, and Lisa was on that side. And... Um, after that, I said, uh, we're not, we're not going to deal with that. So our PTO and everything is, is not good on our 50-year-old tractor. So if you haven't seen our post, we accidentally bought a new tractor today, which can do everything that we want and then some. Wow, you're doing perfect on those. Normally, we have uh, you know one or two that don't come out like we want, but... You can see the little holes in the top. That's yep. Just for putting the seeds in and it, then we'll cover it just makes the hole for you so we put the seed in and cover it up a little bit with this like that oh, yeah. so we had a couple that didn't make it so what we'll do is a lot of times we'll just take the whole piece throw it back in there and do it again but we wanted to make sure that you guys had a got to see the whole process which is kind of cool and this when you have a when you have to have a file box to organize seeds that's that's problem number one no it's actually not she's very organized wow i didn't know we were going to show the whole thing this is cool Little Marvel peas, Lincoln peas. Heather, one, Lincoln peas. <laughs> and this one I didn't try last year, but it's a tendril pea uh, that kind of vines out. So it, it needs a trellis for sure to climb up. Well, they all do, but anyway, it's got really pretty purple pods. I'm excited to see how those come out. So we're gonna try those this year. But it's really simple. You just 
You take the seed out, pop it in the hole. Wow, those are huge. The other ones we planted, you could barely see. What happens if, like on the smaller seeds, what happens if you put accidentally put two or three seeds in, in there? Yeah. They don't always germinate 100%. Like you saw our herbs over there. There's some bare spaces in the trays. So if you don't get 100% germination, sometimes people purposely plant two or three seeds in a hole. But this is really easy because you can actually see it. I could handle these seeds. And everything is, everything on there that we showed you is exactly, was done the exact same way as what we're showing you. So I'm going to do 20 of each in this tray. She's going to do 20 of each. Just to show you kind of the whole process. Yeah. Peas need to be buried about a half inch deep, so those holes aren't quite deep enough. I'm not sure that I'm pushing down a tiny bit before I cover them. This is a very high tech instrument. It's uh it's actually a, a I think it's a I think it's a chopstick. It looks like it. Actually. So just very gently. Now how long does it take for peas normally before we start seeing some um, growth? I'll tell you. 10 to 30 days. Well, that's, that's kind of a wide range. It is. Um, last year, I think these came up in about two weeks. So. And since we're in this controlled 81 degrees, um, chances are high that it might be closer to that 10 day mark. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, you really only need 45 degrees to germinate, so that's why normally I just direct seed them in the ground at this time of year, because it can handle the cold. I'm just going to cover these over. Now, do you like pack those tight? No. I already knew the answer to that, but I always feel like if you don't pack it tight, then it's not going to work. But, I don't want them to work so hard to have to poke up through when they're sprouting. Yeah, I guess you just need to cover them a little bit. Based on that, that is how you do it. I guess that's how we do it. All right, so here, let's see here. Come up here, Mama. So if you haven't watched our quarantine coping two days ago, yeah, we asked you guys um, to spend some time, if you wanted, um, to call a friend or a family member or just do something nice. I saw a, cool, uh, a couple cool responses. Um, the challenge is still out there. So uh, if you haven't watched that, watch it. And um, again, help somebody out. Uh, share a gift or a talent that you have. And, uh, or just FaceTime your friends and check on them. People yeah. are lonely. Yeah, people are lonely and secluded. <laughs> and Especially people that are extroverts, which is not really me, but it is him. I'm so alone. <laughs> no, I really, we're never apart, which yeah. is awesome. So on that note, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Uh, tomorrow, depending on weather, we still want to get to Wim Hof breathing. Yes. And, um, well, we have a, have a lot in store, so make sure that you uh, tune in. So we do this every single night, seven days a week at 6.30 p.m., um, I don't know if there's something you can click to notify when I go live or Back 40 goes live or something like that. You're welcome, Tana. Um, but click that so you're notified that you won't miss it. Yeah. Go back and watch our other ones if you found this fun and exciting. And special thanks to Tim and Kim at Front 20 Farms. We'll maybe share the story on Front 20 and to our Back 40. Um, but for now, you have a great rest of your night. See ya. Bye.